I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is The Word Before Work. Today, we're starting a new five-week series here on The Word Before Work called The Creator in You. Here's the deal. The sixth day wasn't the end of creation. It was only just the beginning. It's when God passed the baton to us and called us to create in his image. In this five-week series, we'll unpack what scripture says about God's work and our work as his stewards of creation. And by the end, I'm praying that these truths and the epic artwork I'm going to share from my new children's book, The Creator in You, will help you view your work with renewed purpose, enthusiasm, and joy. Let's begin by reading John 5, verse 17. Here's what it says. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Again, that was Jesus speaking in John 5, verse 17. The first lines of my new children's book read like this. It says, In the very beginning, A long time ago, God created the world so that we would all know that he himself is a working God. Though you might think that sounds just a little bit odd. Why is it odd to think of God working? After all, Jesus worked and he made it clear that, quote, the Father is always at his work to this very day. See John 5, 17, which you read a few minutes ago. I think it sounds odd because we rarely, if ever, preach or sing about God's working character. We talk a lot about God's love and holiness and mercy, and I think we've forgotten that the first thing God wanted us to know about him is that he is a God who creates, a God who makes things. See Genesis 1.1. By the way, this is totally unique in the history of world religions. Every other origin story of the world says that the gods created human beings to work and serve the gods. Only the Bible says that God himself worked as a means of sharing his love with us. What does that radical truth mean for us today? I would suggest it means at least three things. First, it means that work is inherently good. Because God works Our work is not a necessary evil. It is not a means to an end to do the, quote, real work of ministry, unquote. By choosing to work himself, God blessed the idea of labor with incomprehensible goodness and dignity. Second, God's work shows us that creativity is of infinite worth. In our industrial society, society, creativity and beauty is almost always treated as second class to order and function, including within the church. But as world-renowned painter Makoto Fujimura points out, quote, God the artist communicates to us first before God the lecturer, end quote. Because God is creative, we must fight against relegating creativity to the fringes of the church. Finally, Because God works, Christianity is far more relevant to our daily lives. We don't worship an elitist God who sits idly by observing others working. We worship a God who created in the beginning and who took on a common trade when he came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And so, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. See Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. The God of the Bible knows what it means to work. Praise him for that truth and for his creative character today. Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at TWBWFoundations.com. These email devotionals are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity, 
and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today. Sign up right now, again, totally free at twbwfoundations.com.